This is a path of muhabbat. It's a door to this perfection of insan and insana kamal. It's Laila anta subhanika inna kuntum min al-dhalimin. That to admit to myself the nothing but the greatness of Allah and I am an oppressor to myself. And this opens this door of marifa and this key of marifa is based on this ayatul kareem because Sayyidina Yunus Zul, Zulnoon carrying the secret salam of the two noons, the reality of this maqam al ihsan and sana kamil to perfect the two lights. So in Ayat al Kareem that he's reciting, some say recite 4,444 times, however many times to recite, seven times, three times. And Mawlana Shaykh saying, if you recite seven times or 40 times, you won't leave this earth except as wilayat and sainthood. That, Lahina anta subhanika ni kuntu min al dhalimeen wa fasajda bna jayna min al gham wa dhalika nijina mu'mineen. But it's everything of our way is based on tafakkur. This is not a school in which they just throw out and then people keep going. This school is a school of tafakkur. And there are many shaykhs on the internet, there are many ways on the internet. But this school that Allah opened, Prophet opened, permission of awliyaullah Mawlana Shaykh opened, has a curriculum. If the student knows it or doesn't know it, that's their problem. The shaykh knows there is a curriculum. It's based on Shams al Arifin. Every month we are moving through these pardeh, through these hijabs on a gondola into the presence and to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad to give us an understanding. Means they went, they achieved and they are continuously struggling against themselves as a result Allah sent them back like a ride that we're going to send you on a secure line that you're not going to get lost and perish, go back. And on this secure line you're going to keep bringing people back into the heart of Prophet It has a curriculum, there are books, there's an immensely deep website and every month they're teaching on a course. So it means that if we don't understand meditation, tafakkur, annihilation of the self, we don't know how the year begins on Muharram, that no haram and sacrifice yourself, don't give an excuse to yourself. If we don't understand the journey, that's again your fault. But they are on a curriculum. They're not randomly opening up pages from somebody, reading something, throwing some knowledges out. You don't know why is it being said that time, why is it not being said this time. But this particular <coughs> school broadcasting throughout this earth from Vancouver is on a curriculum that they are in a school in which to make stars. They're in a school in which to annihilate the mass the square-headedness of people via the energy that Allah has bestowed, via the knowledges being propagated and via the live associations that are being broadcasted worldwide. Means that they're going to take away a square-headedness, crush, 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 Allah going to crush from every direction. Whether the servant knows why they have difficulty or not, that's just their own hardship. The clever one is sitting and listening and saying, now I understand why I have difficulty in life. Because Allah is going to make the square to be like ground beef, round off the edges, crush it to be nothing. In its nothingness they can begin to liquefy. Once they liquefy that matter then to become gaseous and ethereal is very easy. Any, any type of water put a little bit of heat and they are moving, they're outside of their body experiencing through their khash, through their vision, through whatever Allah want to make them to experience. But the door was my nothingness, that I am an oppressor to myself. 
So is there possibility that you could come and say that, you know, I've uh, worked on myself for so many days and I think I have overcome my anger? Hmm? You are thinking that you can overcome your anger? Or the hint was, no, I'm an oppressor to myself. Ya Rabbi, I'm going to work on my qadab and my anger and in my deepest recess of my heart I have to know I have absolutely no way of accomplishing it. If you think that you can fix your problem then that's like saying I can do a surgery upon myself. That you have a, an organ within you that's wrong, focus on it, do some diet but you don't think you're actually going to now cut yourself and take it and take the surgery out. The spiritual path is based on nothing, I am nothing. If they say work on something for 40 days, work on it for 40 years, 400 years, you will never achieve anything. If you are true to yourself, you're going to do your best and recognize that you have no way of achieving it. And that's all Allah wants. Means our life is the struggle, for Allah is the victory. What Allah determines as a victory is not the same as what we understand as a victory. We so said we were watching Fatih, Muhammad Fatih who conquered Constantinople. And in one of the teachings, because the show that was broadcasting was not about awliya, in the other teachings of awliya had a shaykh, Naqshbandi shaykh and every time he's fighting and teaching that you're going to be the one who conquers, fighting half his army is dying. And he comes back it's like angry, what happened? What do you mean what happened? Don't you see all the souls, they're now all shaheed. I see all the souls of these soldiers are shining like luminous lights, they achieved Allah's victory. What? Because <laughs> he's thinking his victory is to take and become an emperor. Allah's victory is they achieve their highest stations of their reality. They struggled in Allah's way and Allah granted them a victory. The victory wasn't money, wasn't authority, it wasn't power, but was to struggle in Allah's way. For the goal may be something completely different of what Allah wants for us and what we want for ourselves. So it means my life is about the struggle. When my shaykh says, work on your characteristic, I work with all my, my ability on the characteristic and I understand that he gave me a broken bucket and the bucket was me and is broken. And he told me, go and empty this ocean with this bucket. And the way is not based on the mind. We said last night and this way is based on and meditating on what the shaykhs are ta teaching. That as soon as a teaching comes it has to enter to the heart. Don't take the teaching and move it to the head. If it went to the head you're already in, in danger. Oh let me think what the shaykh is saying now. It's in danger because as soon as this knowledge enters the head the head is where now shaitan is sitting, come and bring what he just said to us. I'm going to point everything is wrong what he just did, what he just said, everything is going to be. By the time it enters here you're already upside down. What they understood of Samina wa Tana, they heard the knowledge and put it into their heart and they said they have to achieve it to the best of their ability. And they understood that they are the broken bucket. And they understood when the shaykh said, empty the ocean, it was not about calculating how am I going to do that? Because can you fix your characteristic? It's like me telling you right now, come to this specific ocean, I give you a broken bucket and the order from Allah is empty it. You can't argue with Allah and say, no I'm not doing that, this is a ridiculous command, this is a ridiculous uh, order that <laughs> you've given to me. Because the victory is for Allah So they were taught, just start shoveling. You never know when إِذَا جَعَنَا نَصْرُ اللَّهِ إِذَا جَعَنَا نَصْرُ اللَّهِ That Allah says, you struggle, 
I will send support. You don't know how Allah in the middle of shoveling the, the ocean, He put a hole in it and make all the water to go down and it looked like you achieved with that bucket to empty. And this way is a miraculous way and it's never by our own hands. They would tell us to put out flyers for the event, always repeating our own lives. We would blanket the area, 200, 300 flyers by myself, go out and handle and hand out donuts so that the zikr would be busy. I'd go to the mosque where they were very rough and mean people, I'd hand out a <laughs> flyer for the zikr and give a donut so that they would come to get the donut because it's free food <laughs> and they give them a flyer. Then go to the zikr and then subhanAllah the zikr is packed. Then I asked him, oh, so you come from the flyer? He said, no. I said, did you come from the flyer? He said, no. So these people all are in the zikr and none of them came from my flyer. And then Mawlana Shaykh teaching, of course they're not going to come from you. It's not a direct one for one, but you do the work, Allah sends from whoever He wants and He sends whom He wants. He doesn't want them, but He wanted you to go out and work for it. It means this way is not something we understand. It's not the, uh, I did this for 10 days, now how am I, am I cured now, it's finished. No, it's a lifetime and a lifetime in which you work and work and work and realize it's never finished. And if you really think you're going to finish it, you're sicker than you thought. The reality of, of one whom is achieving knows himself as the biggest oppressor. I am the meanest one. I am the angriest one. I am the worst one and I will never achieve. And then they begin to cry all night long. Ya Rabbi, I'm struggling, I'm trying, I'm doing the best I can and I'm the worst one and I'm a hypocrite and I'm everything bad, everything bad until Allah agrees with them, says, you're correct. But because I love you and you are sincere, I will begin to erase all these characteristics. If it was about you fixing yourself and having the ability to fix yourself, you're not in need of Allah and the Rasul Then we would be like Pharaoh, I, I am the Lord Most High. Allah wants us to be in need. Allah wants us to see how weak I am, how bad I am, how my characteristics are really what they are and I begin to work on them. When I work on them, I realize how I'm oppressing myself. I realize my nothingness. It's not about the state of visions. We said today at lunch with our people that these shaykhs are very powerful. As soon as you come into their association, like a rocket they're flying. No doubt, if you're following them through the internet, through whatever means that you're following, no doubt you're going to see things because you're on a rocket flying through the heavens, through the heart of Prophet You're going to have khash, you're going to see, you're going to have all sorts of experiences. But not from your rocket, but because you're on their rocket. Their rocket is on their shaykh's rocket. The shaykh rocket upon the shaykh rocket means then the big Siddiq, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Imam Aysam is pulling them. So of course the visions is not a sign of achieving a liquid state. But last time we said, we said the, you have to leave the solid state and enter into a liquid state. The liquid state is a sign of your good character. Liquid state is not what you see and how long you've been in tariqah, but if we throw something at you, you're going to smile. If we insult you in front of somebody, you're going to laugh. I, I wouldn't dare do that to anyone around here because <laughs> they're going to give it to you and send you out hurt. It's not that I see things. But that my character. Why? Because Allah didn't care what Prophet says. He kept saying that Prophet says, I'm um, the qayb, I don't see qayb, I don't see qayb. But khuluqul azim, you have a magnificent character. It wasn't about praising what I'm seeing. That's just the candy, the eye candy that they're giving to lure you in. But what really has to be achieved is the good character. When they begin to have a sense that your character is good, your character is good, they'll begin to interact with you, even through the internet. They can interact a couple times and see somebody like a wild dog, fiercely they get angry and, and they're going to start commenting back. 
weird comments. Oh, this one is still very wild, was she? Or they interact with you on a personal level, those are lucky that are able to be at that personal vicinity and they keep prodding you, keep prodding you, keep prodding you and see that only a smile should come. Every type of ridicule, every type of talk, everything that is uncomfortable to you, they want to see where your breaking point is. Always with the best of manners. They're not harsh and rude people because then that would be that they have bad character. But with good character they keep playing, keep playing to see what type of character the person has. Why? Because the only thing important for Allah is good character. Always smiling, always happy, always in, in a dialogue with them, I'm nothing, I know nothing. As whatever they say it's a smiley character, happy character. That person like water. That nothing phasing them, nothing is irritating them. This is the good character. The water state is a state in which it submits. We pray that Allah dress us mm. and bless us with that mm. and each one to be honest with themselves and understand, Ya Rabbi what state am I in? Why am I getting angry? Why am I agitated by everything? Why do I care if somebody humiliated? We've been humiliated on the internet in front of hundreds of thousands of people from our shaykh saying he doesn't know me, he's not with me, he's not this, he's not that. It doesn't matter what anyone says, doesn't matter if the whole world wants to curse you, unsubscribe from your dialogues, make all sorts of comments back to you, it's not about social media tariqah, it's not about being popular amongst people, it's about Allah to be happy with you. Mm. It's about Prophet to be happy because the ridicule comes from those who love you most, it's going to hurt the most, it's going to go the deepest the most. The postman who bothers you, you don't care about the postman, he's like, a postman, who cares? Well we have a postman here Roger. <laughs> No. So at those levels, they are under continuous attack, continuous difficulty, continuous stress. But not their soul. Their soul is linked and their eyes don't even have to close each other and they see their shaykh and the ruhaniyat of the shaykh. We said before, this ocean of muhabbat, when they fell in love and their love was real, their soul is bonded to their shaykh. Bond that can never be taken away. No matter what Allah does with physicalities and distances and whatever it is, it's of no importance. The world of light is in singularity in an ocean of oneness. Sayyidina Muhammad in that center and all the Sahabi, all the Ahlul Bayt, all the awliyaullah fi samai wa fil ard are in that location. And they're all together in that love and they never leave that love. But the ocean of mulk, oh it's the ocean of conflict and, and fitna and every type of difficulty. And at their level every difficulty comes just to test how much they have love and how much they have patience. Patience and patience and patience. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of this path and this way. Every type of irritation and aggravation comes, every type of understanding comes, whatever you feel like you're being tossed. And we said this very beautific song that we listened to from Sami Yusuf. I am drift, well Raj is not here to sing it. Raj if you're watching from India you can sing it via live <laughs> connection. I'm driftwood now, means I'm a piece of wood. That Allah has thrown me into this ocean and I'm being beaten left and right from this ocean, I'm tired. I'm ready to die, I'm ready to go from this world. And the song is, I'm finished, just let the wood now to land upon the shore and give me your najat, I'm ready to pass. And, and this is the kalam of awliyaullah that their life is a continuous struggle, continuous bombardment from these oceans of rahmah. And Allah saw within them and looked upon them just for good character.
So when we read these naat and read these salawats, read them and really understand that they took a path of immense difficulty, humiliation. How many awliyaullah were given orders to stand outside of a city and anyone who was coming into the city would throw food at them, insult them, curse them, ridicule them and they had no permission to leave that position. And people would walk by that this is a majdub, this is a nobody, this is a, is, a, is a rotten person. And they were under the command of Allah to take the burden and pray for anyone who enters into that city. Not that you wear fancy and glittery juppa and sit up on a chair and everybody come kiss your hands and feet. They were in a position to take difficulties and pray for the salvation of people. The Shaykh, Shaykh Luhayfi was the Imam of the Budala and they said that, that he was serving water in the mosque and teaching hadith in the day but he had such a humble appearance that people thought he was maybe the, the worker and, and would talk bad. And they posted an article that he had one enemy that continuously was attacking him, insulting him, standing up and cursing him, saying bad things to him. And he never changed his character. With these awliya you can't achieve these states. It's not something easy to achieve. We don't even want to see anybody who's a little bit crazy. He was sitting with him while he's insulting him, cursing him, everything and smiling. And coming to his house and cursing him, insulting him and smiling until the man himself became sick. And immediately he went to visit him. And he, that snapped him. I spent my life aggravating and insulting you. Why are you here to see me? Why didn't you just curse me? How, so, how am I going to curse you? I'm a servant of Allah With all you did for me, I love you. And he took his shahada and took his bayat and reaffirmed his faith that you are a true awliya of Allah We pray that Allah give us that sense of reality, of that sense of entering into your oceans of water but no, no crazy people to attack us, Ya Rabbi, that's, not, <laughs> that's not a station <laughs> that is achieved anymore. May those big awliya who are achieving that, Ya Rabbi, pray for us Ameen. and lift us up by the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basir Surat al-Fatiha.